Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for joining this session. I know we're nearing the end of the conference and your brains are probably a little bit tapped out, but I see some snacks and wine, which is awesome. So um, this is great. Um, so yes, I'm gonna be talking to you about building a scalable content marketing operation. Um, the way I ended up on this stage is that I came to this conference last year and provided some pretty candid feedback about um, the sessions I attended that I really wanted more tactical takeaways, things I could use more than just buy this tool. So um, careful what you ask for. It's kind of like when someone on my sales team says, wouldn't it be great if we had a blog post about, and I say, did you just volunteer to write a blog post? So yes, I volunteered myself for a session. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, obviously, that's not a picture of me. I figured that since I'm standing in front of you, I would put my 20-pound cat, Roby, who wears a necktie every day. Um, just That's more fun. Um, so I'm the director of content marketing at Funware, um, which is an Austin, Texas-based mobile software platform. So um, we have about 200 employees. We did about 50 million last year trying to almost double that this year. So high growth, um, you know, tech space, all of that. Um, before I started at Funware, I was at a company called Sales Engine Media, which started out as a marketing automation software platform like Marketo, Pardot, et cetera. Um, and they realized through the process of signing on their clients that they not only needed marketing automation, but they needed content to put through it. So the business kind of went through a pivot to become a content marketing agency. And it was my role there to figure out how we were gonna construct and deliver the content packages our clients were signing up for. So these were things that included some crazy number of pieces of content, like five white papers and 10 blog posts and another bundle of, of content. So it was a lot of stuff for a lot of different clients and I had to figure out how to do it from scratch. So um, I did that in the agency environment at Sales Engine and um, then when I moved to Funware, it was a similar kind of thing but for an in-house team. And um, you know, for a company that had been around since 2009, Funware had never attempted to have an in-house marketing organization. So um, even though the company had been around for like five years at the time I joined, there was nobody, you know, I was one of the first marketing hires. So similar situation, starting from scratch, very little budget or tools or, or anything. So um, I'm gonna talk to you guys today about the sort of basics of the processes, people, and tools that you need to build and scale a content marketing operation, um, even if you don't have very many dollars or you know, a lot of resources at your disposal. Um, <clears throat> a quick note about my role at Funware, um, director of content marketing probably could mean a lot of things at a lot of different places, um, but at Funware it means um, that I oversee both our in-house um, corporate and uh, demand gen marketing team, as well as our inside sales team, which I think is kind of an unusual combo, but as we head more towards you know, where the future of the market is going, I mean, we were, we've probably all sat in on ABM sessions um, over the course of this conference. Um, marketing and sales are becoming much more interlocked and marketing is reaching much farther into the sales process. So um, it's kind of, I think we'll start to see more people like me who have oversight of kind of both halves of that uh, journey. So. Why build a content marketing operation? Um, it's 2017, I, I doubt anybody in this room really needs to be convinced of the importance of content marketing as a strategy, but operationalizing it is something that uh, is a new sort of focus or something, a new way of thinking about it. So um, the point of building a content marketing operation is so that, I mean, probably everybody in here has seen this episode of I Love Lucy with conveyor belts and she gets totally overwhelmed and ends up stuffing the chocolate in her face and in her dress. This is kind of what happens if you don't operationalize content. You know, there are certain things as marketers that we're doing over and over repeatedly with the same team members, the same resources, and we are doing ourselves a great disservice if we don't actually document those processes and start tweaking them and optimizing them. Um, we can't go and ask for more resources, we can't demonstrate value, we can't do any of that until we operationalize our content marketing. So before I go on, just show of hands, how many people in this room have what you consider to be like very basic or no content marketing operation at your company? 
OK, got a couple. And then how about mid-stage? OK, cool. And who here is like superstar, very mature? I don't know. OK, great. <laughs> great. Um, well, hopefully you guys will have some takeaways here as well. Um, for me, uh, this is sort of the, the, the core dream team you need to have to execute and operationalize content. And depending on how many resources you have and the size of your company, all of these competencies may sit in like one person or two people, which is fine, but you just need to get clear on who is responsible for what and, and the fact that these competencies exist. So the managing editor um, is, if you're gonna make one hire, um, you have the resources to do that on your team um, or to find somebody in your org who has this skill set. This is like top, top priority. Um, and I'm not just saying that because this is like my role and, and my sort of DNA, but um, the managing editor is the person who is going to be the project manager for all of your content, you know, taking it through all the phases from, you know, conception through layout, you know, sort of checking off, yes, this is typo free. Yes, this is, uh, uh, parallels our current messaging. Yes, this aligns with our strategy. So that person is sort of the commanding officer of your team. Um, the product marketing and product input, this, you know, depend, this may be under different job titles. This may be your product manager, product marketing, maybe your CTO, you know, there's, but there's somebody in your org who is the source of knowledge and subject matter expert on your product. They know what it does, they know what it doesn't do. You have to find that person in your org to be able to get those definitive answers because otherwise you end up with content that may make false promises or just plain doesn't align to what your product does, which is you know, obviously embarrassing and you don't wanna sell anything that you can't deliver on. Um, the marketing strategy input is the sort of, the strategic input that might come from your CMO, maybe your CEO, um, but just, you know, this person is not gonna be as involved in the tactical production of content, but it's really important to make sure that whatever you're doing, whatever you're spending your time and resources on, is actually aligned to some larger strategic goal or initiative. Um, you have your graphic and web design, pretty self-explanatory. Campaign execution. Um, at Funware, the person who is in charge of this is our demand gen marketing manager. You know, I don't know who this is at your org, but this is the person who runs your marketing automation tool if you're using one. The person who uh, owns the relationships with your you know, third-party vendors if you're doing programs, anything like that, campaign execution. And then sales enablement is a piece that um, is kind of new to the way that we think about ourselves as marketers, but goes back to ABM, goes back to marketing reaching farther and farther into the sales funnel. If you don't have somebody on your team whose job it is to think about how is sales gonna use this content, how are we gonna increase the mileage of this content, um, you could be leaving money on the table. So the second piece, once you have those roles in place, is processes. Um, <clears throat> and this is just about defining those things that you're doing day in and day out. So the first step is your content types. Um, these are those things, like I said, you're producing every day. At Funware, these are things like blog posts, uh, feature sheets, landing pages, anything that you, you know, if you find yourself producing something more than, say, three times, it's probably a good idea to document a process and owners around it. Um, the second piece is the process for each specific piece of content. Um, sorry if, you, if that's a little bit small to read, but that's just sort of a sample of the kind of steps that you would go through and who might own them to, say, do a, uh, I think this was for like a, an info sheet. Um, I do want to call out those last two steps that I included there, share with sales and use in campaign. Seems simple, but I think as marketers, we often spend so much time just trying to get the thing out the door and published that we kind of forget to use it or to make sure that other people in our organization know it exists and where to find it and how to use it. Um, so those things are very important. And when you document your processes, you can then force yourself to use those best practices. So if you have in your process these two things, they cannot you cannot consider that project complete until those things are checked off. It's a way to, to force yourself to do those things that otherwise you might let fall through the cracks. 
And finally, you need to standardize uh, where you're storing and sharing. I think we all have experienced some version of like Dropbox version control hell. Like it's very common, um, but as a team, you know, as marketers, we should own this and you know, sort of force compliance among our, our peers and colleagues. So um, it's just establishing where things are gonna be stored and communicating that widely is very important. So um, Google is a free tool. Or if you get the enterprise thing, I think it's like 10 bucks a month per person. So I don't work for Google, I work for Funware, but I love Google's tools and we use them you know, all, all day, every day at Funware. We also have some paid tools, which I will mention at the end um, because you guys might be curious about our tech stack, but these are, you can do the basics of building a scalable content marketing operation with these free tools from Google. So Google Drive, you know, fabulous way to, uh, how, what, how many people in here use Google apps in your, ah, yes, yes, okay, great. Um, so we all know what these things do. Um, Google Drive has fabulous sharing and permissions. Docs, same thing. The thing I love about Docs is the collaboration capabilities, that you can comment and very specifically zero in on just one word or a section of the text. And they have now introduced the ability to actually assign tasks to people within the documents. So um, that is great. You can also see the revision history right there in that same document of like every revision you ever went through. If you decide you want to go back to something or you know, see what changes somebody made, it's all in there. And you don't have to worry about version control or you know getting to the bottom of who did what um, finally sheets it, you know obviously is their spreadsheet tool um, these are fabulous for anything that you need like a budget or a shared message map which I will get to in a minute um, any tool that has a lot of sort of information in different categories that needs to be collaborated and shared sheets is where you go and Fun fact, Google also introduced the ability to turn any document or uh, slide presentation or spreadsheet, anything built in their apps, you can turn into a template now. So here's an example of how you might just very simply in a Google Doc create a template for, this was a blog post, um, but you have spaces for the fields that you're gonna need to fill in maybe the basic steps you know you go through every single time to produce a blog post, and then who would be assigned to each of those steps. And assigning it can be as simple as highlighting the step and commenting at mentioning that person, hey, you're responsible for reviewing this. And you know, that's it. And then all the collaboration is there within that one document. Now, message mapping, is a tool that we use a lot and has helped us scale our content org. Um, there are a lot of great tools out there that will kind of ingest your content and create a heat map for you of you know, where you have content coverage, where you lack it, kind of what your content universe is. If you don't have a tool that will help you do that, you can pretty easily create a sort of manual message map. So I think we're all as marketers, um, pretty familiar with these buying uh, stages, you know, awareness, something hurts, not quite sure what it is, you know, I haven't put my finger on it yet, but I know I have a pain and I'm starting to do some research on what it might be. What is it even called? Education, now I know what it's called, I'm gonna start researching my treatment options, as it were. Consideration, now I've narrowed it down to a couple of options. Which one is the best for me? Do they work? Have other people used them? Are they priced fairly? All of that. Purchase is when you really want to um, solidify the person's purchase decision, they've, they've made the right one, that's going to work for them. And then finally, post-sale is all about you know, making sure that um, your product is sticky and they use it to its fullest potential so they don't want to look anywhere else when renewal time comes around. So you can create a message map of these buying stages. This is the first page of one of our actual message maps for our healthcare audience. You might have you know, regional audiences or certain personas that you're building your message maps around. But the idea is to have in one document your universe of content for that persona or, or whatever you're targeting your message map around. This serves a lot of purposes. Not only does it help your marketing team, as I said, kind of heat map and understand where you have content, where you might be missing it, but it also helps your sales team see 
what content exists that I can use in my conversations. So if I know that somebody has downloaded this first ebook, Has Your Patient Experience Lost Its Way, and I am in sales and trying to figure out what else might be relevant, all I have to do is look at this and see the other uh, pieces of content that are in that same buying stage and just pluck them out. So all of these things enable us to create integrated campaigns. Um, this is just an example of kind of the, the fruits of operationalizing and, and standardizing your content production processes. So um, at Funware, we have processes for each of these content types. We have owners for each one. Everybody knows how they're supposed to collaborate and, uh, and contribute, and it allows us to get much more efficient and effective with our, our content. Um, also to be much more um, diversified in everything that we're producing and to report on it. Um, if you can't, you know, the first step to, to optimizing what you're doing is reporting on it and understanding your processes. So um, the results from operationalizing your, your content are obviously uh, speed, efficiency, and scale. You're gonna get faster, you're gonna get better. Everybody knows what they're responsible for doing. They know how they're gonna do it, you know, what timelines they're on. You get much faster and better. Um, the process optimization, as I said, if you don't document and, and understand your processes, how are you gonna begin to improve them or show anybody else how effective you are? Um, reporting and visibility, same kind of deal. You, how are you gonna go and ask for more, better resources for content marketing if you can't explain to your leadership what you've been up to and, and how things are working? And of course, good vibes. You know, As you're producing more and better content and sharing it um, in a more standardized way throughout your company, you're gonna be a hero for sales. You are gonna be, uh, look good to your leadership team and your marketing team internally is gonna feel a lot better about the work they're doing because they're gonna understand uh, how it connects to the bigger picture because you've built in those processes of sales enablement, sharing, um, using things in campaigns. So you can start to get to a point where, go back to this slide, not only are you creating processes around these individual pieces of content, but maybe even zooming out to the campaign level. So, you know, you're doing a conference. What, what all falls under that? You know, we know for a conference, step one is signing up for the badges. Another step might be creating landing pages. So all of these things can start to ca cascade out into um, sort of hierarchies of tasks and owners that then allow you to really become more effective and efficient. So these are the fancy tools that we use um, at Funware. This is after I had sort of graduated and, and gotten the, the manual um, content operation built. It was very analog, very manual. Um, but once I had done that, I was able to then go to my boss and say, I think we need to invest more resources. We've basically hit our limit as a team doing this manually. You know, there is so much more we could do reporting wise, efficiency wise, et cetera, if we had more tools. So um, Kapost is a tool that we live and die by at Funware. It's not the only content marketing tool. You know, there are others out there that allow you to collaborate and share content. Um, Kapost is fabulous because not only does it have all of these workflows built in, you know, basically the ones that I demonstrated manually, it has all these tasks and workflows built in, but also the capability to share via content galleries that you can curate and serve up to sales. Um, so that is a great tool. We are a Pardot user. Um, Salesforce kind of goes without saying, I think. Um, and then these two tools on the bottom are, are new tools that we have signed on with, but I'm pretty excited about. Um, Terminus is us kind of sticking our toe into the account-based marketing waters and um, learning how to think about demand gen a little bit differently, you know, the whole idea of activity versus leads coming in um, and just creating awareness within an account versus here's a lead on a silver platter for you to reach out to. 
Um, we're kind of in the middle of that, that mindset shift right now, but it's going well. Um, and Caliber Mind is a tool that's in beta, but it, it will allow us to pull our own Salesforce data, supplement it with other data from third-party sources and out there on the web to really get an understanding of our specific buyers and their, the process they went through to uh, get to the closed deal. So, um, like I said, it's based on our own Salesforce data that is then supplemented, and um, I'm really excited about just the combination of these tools enhancing and, and furthering um, the stickiness and effectiveness of our content marketing operation at Funware. So, I spent a lot less time talking than I thought I would. Um, does anybody have questions? Oh, here we go. Yes, so um, what we will do is kind of meet as a team to decide you know, wh what we might wanna do with that piece of content. And then it's just as simple as splitting out, like let's say it's an ebook, probably that's a good example of something you might be repurposing. So what I would do with this sort of manual, let me go back to that slide. If I were using this template, I might pull out that section of the ebook and, and put in a fake title, like, you know, repurposed ebook section, blah, 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 and um, assign tasks based on that. So, you know, the first task might be brainstorm on what this piece of content looks like. I mean, you can get that granular with your tasks. Um, then you might assign it to, let's say, your managing editor, whoever your, your messaging person is, like, hey, you go rethink, you know, what the call to action might be if we pull this into a blog post. Um, and then from there, it's just a matter of um, just pulling it out into those, the assets that you want to recreate and dumping it into these templates and then saying, go, go, go. I mean... Yes, Exa okay, yes. So when we set out to produce a big piece of content like an ebook, something we know that's gonna involve a lot of resources, we kind of build that into the process. Like, what is this gonna turn into? So I think in our, our ebook workflow, we actually have a step that is uh, spin-off derivative blog post, spin-off email. So you can put in steps for those large pieces of content that force your own best practices. Just like share with sales, you could have, you know, create derivative blog posts, create derivative landing page, infographic, et cetera. Yeah, what else? Bueller. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess that's it. <laughs>